how do I get into the PRCA? How can I go shoot rodeos? I don't want to sit up in the stands. I want to get out there and lay in the dirt. Well, welcome folks. We're at Prescott, Arizona at the oldest rodeo in the PRCA. Is it the PRCA's oldest it's, rodeo or is it the oldest rodeo? It's the world's oldest rodeo. And what that kind of means here is it's the first rodeo that had a format and gave uh, prize money to it. So that, that means all you guys down there in Texas and Deer Trail, Colorado, you can argue with him, all right? And I'll send you the boss's number. You can argue <laughs> with him. Hey, anyways, this is Bobby Rosales. He's a, a PRCA photographer, like I said. Um, Bobby, give us a little bio of where you're from, how you got here, and who helped you along the way? Because it takes a lot of help to get where so, you're at now. Yeah, and honestly, the first thing I've got to say is it's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's, without him, I couldn't be here at all. None of this would be possible, and being able to do the travel and everything else. So, you know, stuff. You know, all things with, with you know, all things are possible with Christ, and that's exactly true. Especially even in in rodeo and photography too. But um, first camera I got was mom left me a camera when she passed away from cancer, and Sorry wife said, that. wife said, hey, you can at least shoot us while we go on vacation. So I said, okay, we did that. It was kind of fun. Didn't really enjoy it that much, but she says, hey, you need to learn to do rodeo so I found a rodeo photography school and uh, Terry Abrahamson had one in Oklahoma so I went to hers and kind of just really enjoyed it and learned a lot and went to two more of hers and ended up getting my permit here in 2021 it took me about three months to get it filled my understanding is that's probably one of the quickest since I was done gonna it. say that's really quick I've been working on mine for almost uh, eight months now so and I've heard, and I've heard a lot of folks tell me even after they had their permit that they were it took them another year and a half, two years to get it filled. So I'm kind of lucky that I got it done in three months. And this is now my second year as a card holder. So well, it goes to show all the hard work you put it yes. in. You, you get paid back for any of the work you put. Yeah, we, Ain't yeah, nothing, we free. The, Ain't we, nothing free. Ain't nothing free. Yeah, we putting the miles in. And How many miles do you drive a year? That's a great question. So I do probably forty to 50,000 miles a year. Because I, I, you know, that's me kind of staying low. I haven't gone up to the Pacific Northwest yet, or out to the East Coast. And so I take it you don't lease a truck. No, sir, I don't lease one. I couldn't afford the mileage on that. <laughs> I hear you. You know, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to watch this. They're probably thinking, "How do I get into the PRCA? How can I go shoot rodeos? I don't want to sit up in the stands. I want to get out there and lay in the dirt." What would you tell them? How do they get to their permit? How what's it take to get their card? Can you tell these guys just a little so bit about it? The thing I tell you is enjoy the ride, enjoy the process. Start off with your open rodeos, amateur rodeos, youth rodeos, something close to you that you can shoot and get good at what you're doing. Because once you get the PRSA, we're talking, we want the elite photographers here. We don't want everybody that has a camera and can push the button. We need to know that you know exactly what you're doing. So enjoy the process. Hang out at your youth rodeos, your local rodeos, open anything you can find to shoot. Um, always call them first, make sure they don't have an official photographer. As an official photographer, one of the things that we can't, that we hate the most is when someone just shows up, starts shooting, and say, I'm here because I have a camera. Right. Or I paid for a ticket. Call first. Exactly. So, after you call them, yeah, just start shooting different events and get good at what you're doing. See, I'd like one of the things that Bobby said, and I'm going to agree with, he started off with a camera that he got from his mother when she passed away. So, you don't need an $8,000 Sony or a $500 Canon like he shoots. That's, you know, you don't need that. You can start off with anything. Whatever you got on you, if you got your phone, start off with it. Learn from it and keep going. What do you think about that? Absolutely. I mean, even the guys at Cowboy uh, Lifestyle Network, CLN, they use their they use their iPhones to catch their video for their content. They're not, they, they, when they do shoot, he's got a $500 camera he got from Walmart. So it, anything's going to work. Just make sure that you, uh, that you, get good at which equipment you have so um if you guys want to even get better i do have photography schools i put on from time to time and around the country so i think our next one's coming up in fountain here in a few weeks so go well, tell them about it so we have a barrel racing clinic that we partnered with connie combs and as they're teaching them how to run barrels i'm teaching y'all how to uh, shoot photography and how to do uh, barrel racing and get the best photos from that event uh, we also talk about other things that you can shoot such as landscape or fine arts or just about anything else you can imagine as soon as you uh, figure out how to shoot rodeo pretty good so it, guys uh, that are shooting amateur stuff uh you know i see the guys in the you know the prca and you see the pros they're in the dirt 
We're in the dirt. Tell them, talk to them a little bit about it. If you want to be right, yeah. what do you got to do? Yeah, well, we're in dirt. We ain't afraid to get dirty. We wear nice clothes, and we know we're getting them dirty. And we have huge cleaning bills and wives that usually hate to see our laundry when we come home. So um, I can't speak for all the other photographers. I mean, I'm usually on the road pretty much full time from March 1st to August 30th. So That's another question I have for you. How many uh, rodeos are you going to travel to this year? So far, right now, I am, I think I've done 10 rodeos and 35 performances. By the time we finish off this this rodeo season, which ends on September 30th, I will probably have hit, I don't know, 18, 19 rodeos and probably close to 75 performances. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of it work. It sounds like a lot of fun and living the glorious life. So, yeah, living the glorious life, don't let them feel full of you. I mean, I see I see the exotic places like Walmart, truck stops, rest areas. Exactly. Bobby, I guarantee you there's a lot of questions on out there because, you know, shooting rodeo, not none of these arenas have good lighting. Well, sure they do. As long as the sun is shining and it's daylight, <laughs> we got the best lighting in the world. That's right. Of course, when the sun goes down, yeah, um, some light, some arenas have LEDs and some of them don't. Some of them have the old halogen and some of them have two, some of them have four, some have 200. You know, you'll never know. So to even that out, we just use strobes, which is an external flash that we put on a pole outside of the arena. So that LED that you're seeing in the uh, picture right now, that right there, almost all the rodeos now, that's like one of the big things. And shooting photography, talk to me about how that LED light, what's it do when you're trying to shoot, even with strobes? So it, it, with strobes, I don't have a problem with, with any kind of lighting. Um, I control the light at that point. But when we're going without strobes, I've had a few arenas say, hey, we don't like what you do strobes because we got LED lights. And some of them are hanging high in the air, which I have to convince them if they're hanging too high in the air, we're going to use strobes. So if you're going to lie to Narina, what are you going to tell these young cowboys? What do they need to do in young cowgirls? I'm sorry. But how many lights um, for arena? Where would you put them? And let's go. We're going to show you this arena right here. And I'm going to let Bobby hold this. And a huge arena here. It's not the size of uh, Cheyenne, but it's still a pretty big arena. It's one of the bigger arenas I'm in all year. I have shot this one in the past with five lights. I don't like it, so I've went up to eight lights this year, and we're going to see how it works. But I think we're going to be a whole lot better. And I can kind of show you. Ugh, I'll just come down here so I don't kill myself. So I've got two different lights I'm running here. This is an 8MB 1600. And I've got this one and, and two others lined up for the buck, up against the buck and shoots. And this will give me all perfect lighting for our uh, rough stock. Anybody who's on in the arena is now on video, so. <laughs> Good, how you doing, sir? I think the other ones I run is White Lightning 1600s. And this one here, and I've got one across the arena up high that are uh, aimed toward the roping boxes, and I got one at the end of the arena. And that'll light up the arena for the roping boxes. Let's show them more that. So that one right there, you see the Pepsi sign up to the top left. There's a light right there, and Bobby will show you the rest there, Mark. So if you want to hold this a second for me. Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody understands that these lights do not stay this low. So you get it. minimum, that's where that light will be at. So, um, preferably, but I don't have a lift with me. I want them up there in the rafters. But since I don't have a lift with me, they're going to have to work on the fence line there. Um, we don't put them on the arena fence because I don't want a cowboy get hitting them, getting hurt, or fouling themselves with the rope. Well, I just have to figure out where I'm at right here. So we're going to jump up here and walk into the 1888 Buckle Club. This is uh, their VIP club, but since no one's out here yet, it re doesn't really matter. Plus, I can get in the shade up here. Hi there, I'm still in the camera view. How are you? <laughs> Good, how you doing? Good. All right guys, I guess we're gonna swing around here. There we go, we got that light there. Now this is the one I was talking about at the end of the arena that's gonna go up high. It's actually gonna go higher than that. It's still gonna go up another seven or eight feet above that. And it's gonna flash and put light all the way down through the arena. That'll allow us to have extra light on the buck, on the bucking stock, but also the roping boxes. Hey Bobby, I got a quick question. When you're shooting, you shoot JPEG or you shooting RAW? 
So it kind of depends what I'm shooting. Uh, rodeos, I shoot, J, I shoot JPEG. It makes it so much easier, so much quicker to, to edit. Um, I set everything up in my camera to be almost spot on, so I don't have a whole lot to change. Everything's correct in yeah. the camera. If you're if you're having problems with your camera settings, I'd suggest do raw until you get your or do JPEG me. Do do raw until you get used to your camera settings. Once you figure out camera settings, switch to JPEG. It makes it so much easier, so much faster to to edit. I mean, I can do thirty. I can edit thirty five hundred photos in about an hour to an hour and fifteen minutes when I'm shooting JPEG. Raw, it Ooh. takes me about four or five hours. That camera getting crooked. I think I got the weak arm there for a second. You can do thirty five hundred JPEGs. Yes. Damn. About an hour and a half, and I'll do that. I'll do that at Cheyenne when we do like the. Bro if I send them to you, how much you charge to do my thirty five hundred? Don't know. I've never done them like that. So, <laughs> but because it's you and because it's a Sony camera, it's probably going to be you know ten, twelve thousand. Oh, here we go. Him and the Sony. <laughs> We're going to get him in a real camera. I promise you. One of these days, you got a GoPro today. Hey, if you guys will stick around a little bit. We're going to go over to the buck and shoots. We're going to do a little bit more interviewing. Um, we're going to show off Sal in Vegas. We're going to introduce you to them. So stick around and we'll be right back in a few. So tell us a little bit about Sal and I know about Vegas. All right. Hey, we're going to do a sound check at the same time here. It's all right. We're good. But hey, uh, Sal, uh, we picked him up down in San Salvador when we was there in February. Thought it'd be great to take him and document everywhere we go in our travels this year and pick up some items on the way. At the end of the year, we're going to auction him off and, uh, and everything that he has that we collected. We're going to donate that money to the Western Sports Foundation. That's awesome. And then, it was nice that Todd brought Vegas out to Bandera, so everybody knows if you rodeo, you have to have a good traveling partner. Right. So now Sal's got a good traveling partner in Vegas, and Vegas will go with Sal at the end of the year as well. well that's cool. No, I think me and Ricky, that's my boy, but me and Ricky, we're glad to let um, Vegas go along with you. And, Ricky's going to have a lot of fun getting them going on Facebook and see where Sal and Vegas are at right. every weekend. And we appreciate you doing that. Oh, That's definitely. awfully nice of you. That's yes, really sir. Really nice of you. Yeah, we enjoy it. You know, like Western Sports, Sports Foundation, they're great folks. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the Western Sports Foundation. So they, they're there to help out anybody involved in the Western Sports industry mm -hmm. and, and the lifestyle. Not just rodeo, but kind of, you know, if we're doing cutters or uh, working cow horse or rainers, or if you're just working on the family ranch, they're kind of there to... Help us when we need a hand. Up, we need a, a hand up. You're getting a little first-hand uh, medicine from them, aren't you? You know, uh, no. I've, I'm lucky that I've got a wife that's a doctor, so <laughs> she she takes care of me pretty well. Um, but there's other things that we've talked with them. Yeah, there goes that, huh? Bobby, how many um, photos you think you take in a year out there shooting the PRCA? You know, I really don't know what I've got. Per year but i can tell you i go through a camera body every three years wow so you know so it must be close to a hundred thousand photo clicks that we do for the year but yeah well, about three you don't years, don't take that too serious because he shoots with a cannon so but if you're shooting with a sony yeah you probably get another two three years out of it you might get two or three <laughs> minutes <laughs> so i bet there's a lot of questions and how's a guy that travels the road traveling the rodeo how do you get paid and who pays you do you get to keep the photos or do the photos belong to the committee do they who gets them and how can they use them let's ask bobby bobby how's that work so each committee and each rodeo is different so like we're here in prescott so this one here i they make sure that we have our rooms and they feed us here and i make sure i eat enough to make it worth it but we have a lot of work to do here and then all the photos that i take from here i will actually put on a flash drive and hand it to them right before we leave here and head to the next rodeo. This way they have use of all the photos for their advertising for the next year. Do you travel by yourself? That's another question I have. So some of the rodeo, most of the year I'm, I'm, I'm alone, I'm by myself. Um, this rodeo and then uh, the last weekend of Cheyenne and then uh, after Wyoming, my wife will be with me. Other than that, yeah, I'm pretty much on my own. Wow, she's gonna miss the good ones. She's gonna miss the good ones, ah. but that's all right. I kind of miss her too. So I might have to go up to Cheyenne <laughs> and see him there for a couple days. What do you think? It takes a lot to put a rodeo on. Sound guys, lights. That's it. Then you got Bobby. Yeah, we got me. <laughs> we tell you thanks anyways for uh, having us out, letting us come along and see what's going on and how you doing putting the rodeos together. We really appreciate it. Oh, not a problem. I enjoy it. I'm glad y'all came along and gives me an opportunity right quick to haul out to the rodeo company and uh, 
advanced performance chiropractic. Uh, I think I think who else did we have? H and H Tire, uh, Bang Tail, and uh, Little Sunny Signs out of Moriarty. They those are my sponsors. They helped me get down the road. So without them, I wasn't able to do a lot of this either. So sponsors are a big thing when it comes to rodeo. Traveling up and down the road, fifty thousand miles a year. You don't think about how many of them oil changes. Now there's a hundred dollars an oil change. All kinds of stuff. Tires. See, Just, I can, we can tell you don't have a diesel. Oh, you said oil change, hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah. So his is about three hundred. Well, I hope you enjoyed that day. We're headed back now. We're headed towards Phoenix. Um, I hope uh, all of you up and comer wanting to fo photograph in the PRCA. I hope you got all your answers answered. If you didn't, leave me a comment in the comments below, and I'll see if I can't answer it. If I can't answer it, we'll try to find somebody that can. Bobby and his wife, Joe, they're good people, real good people. You need to find you good people like that and you smother yourself. Because if you're hanging out with good people, you're only going to be good. Anyways, let me get back to driving and watching the road. Appreciate y'all checking out the channel. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button below. I don't say that very often. Probably I never said it because it's the first video I've really ever did a head thing. 